A shot and a half of Angostura bitters? Are you crazy? That might be what you think when you read the ingredients for this cocktail, but it does work. Of course, it's not gonna be to everyone's taste, but if you do like strong botanical flavors like Amari or kind of bolder gins, then definitely give this one a whirl. And stay tuned because I'm gonna show you my favorite twist on it using one of the many fun aromatic cocktail bitters on the market these days. Now, you might be wondering where I am. I know that we've kind of changed locations a few times recently and you're probably getting a little bit dizzy if you are a regular viewer, but this is probably now gonna be our home for at least the next year or so, we want to see. So it's actually a little set um, in the uh, offices of the guys who do all the filming and stuff for me, so it makes it much easier for bump in and bump out with all of our audio equipment and cameras and things like that. So good for those guys. The only problem is for me, if I forget to bring something like the rye for today's Trinidad Sour, then I don't have a back bar to lean on. So we are just gonna go with a little high ABV bourbon, um, which will definitely do the trick. Uh, but yeah, little little bit of up and down there, but hopefully you can get used to the back bar here. And definitely let me know, we can kind of personalize it a little bit more. So let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see on there. Now, the Trinidad Sour is actually a fairly recent invention by bartender Giuseppe Gonzalez in 2009 at the Clover Club in New York. And he was inspired by a drink made just the year before by an Italian bartender named Valentino Bolognese. I love both of those names, they're so strong. Um, but his used pisco and lime instead of the rye and lemon. I'd love to know what inspired him to use such a lot of Angostura, but honestly, the real genius in this drink is the Orja. It's actually like the linchpin of all of the strong flavors here because it's got that kind of sweet nuttiness and it rounds out all of the woody herbal elements of the bitters. And you use a little bit more of that syrup than you usually would of the sweet element. Um, so it's very much a presence in this drink. You can make your own um, and you know, please feel free to, to give it a go. Uh, but honestly, it is a little bit finicky kind of messing around with the almonds and things. I personally tend to um, be a bit lazy and just like to use a good quality bought one like this one from Lieber & Co. Which has a really nice sort of toasty nuttiness to it and then also a more kind of delicate floral note because um, they do use the orange blossom in there and that just really lifts the whole drink. Now your booze uh, is just providing the backbone here, so it doesn't have to be anything too special. Um, it usually is rye, so whatever your go-to cocktail rye is or a good punchy bourbon like Maker's 46. So first things first, we need to, to get a full 45 mils out of heat, these. Obviously they do have the little dasher on them and if you've got heaps of patience, then you can just uh, sort of wait and, and do that um, until you've got enough. Otherwise, if you use like a little tiny knife, like the one that you get on a wine knife, um, there is a hole in there and you should just be able to pop it off. Just remember to put this bit back on before someone else in your bar picks it up and does, you know, a full uh, 30 mils or whatever in their old fashioned when that's not what they're meaning to do. So we'll go 45 mils of Angostura. And then just 15 mils, um, as I said, usually rye, but a nice uh, strong flavored bourbon will definitely work as well. Honestly, you can kind of use anything. Obviously, Angostura is definitely the main flavor in here, so rum works quite well as well. Then we're gonna go 20 mils of our Orgeat. So for anyone that doesn't know, um, it's just a little almond syrup. It's really, yeah, nice and kind of round and nutty. And 20 mils of lemon juice. Then we're just gonna pop some ice in our tin and give it a nice hard shake. Now I do have to say the only problem with this drink is it's not the prettiest color. It sort of comes out quite reddish brown because of the bitters. So if you do have a nice little decorative glass then feel free to use that because um, it also doesn't have a garnish. Trinidad Sour, so now you know. A little bit scared of this, to be honest. No, it is good. I mean, definitely you have to like bitter things. Um, if you're not a fan of sort of any Amaros or anything like that, then probably not gonna be for you. Um, but yes, like obviously super, super botanical, all of that real kind of nice woody spice, a little bit of sweetness. I'm actually quite enjoying using the bourbon. That was a bit of a happy accident. I feel like you're getting a little bit of that kind of vanilla sweetness that works really well with your, um, your nutty syrup in there as well. 
Look, it will certainly put some hairs on your chest and I'm okay with it. Now, as much as this drink is a rule breaker, it actually follows a pretty classic sour template, so it does make it easy to play around with. And there are obviously some really interesting cocktail bitters out there now, so why not have some fun? This drink I'm gonna make was on the menu at Lily Black's, which was the first bar I worked at in Melbourne, um, and it was actually renowned for its bitter selection. We had literally hundreds of bitters to play with. And in fact, a couple of the guys who worked there started their own bitters company called Mr. Bitters. And their fig and cinnamon bitters are still one of my absolute favorites. They came up with the Cinnerman, which is an excellent name as well, uh, to sort of showcase those bitters. It's very similar to a Trinidad sour, but the fig and cinnamon is a match made in heaven for rum. And the proportions are a little different to get the balance right with these bitters because they're a little bit sweeter and fruitier than your real kind of woody Angostura. Um, so if you are playing around, I'd suggest starting with a little less orgia than in the sort of original Trinidad sour recipe and then increase as needed. So we're gonna go 30 mils of the Mr. Bitters fig and cinnamon bitters and then 15 mils of an aged rum, just sort of whatever your house pour is. Then we're gonna go 15 mils of orgia. Obviously orgia and rum are kind of best friends anyway. So it all works very nicely together. And 20 mils of lemon juice. Just gonna fill it up with ice and give it a shake. And this one just gets a little star anise floated on top just to really enhance all of those lovely warm baking spice aromatics. And there we have the Cinnerman. It's really yum, definitely. Um, I mean, obviously still has a good whack of bitterness in there, but definitely a bit more approachable um, than the Angostura. So maybe a good place to start if you're not 100% sold on the idea. And yeah, again, the orgeat and the nuttiness just really ties it together. It's really quite like juicy fruity from the fig in there too. It's just really delicious. I think it's just uh, one of those kind of modern classics. It's always stuck with me for being pretty simple, but really tasty. Uh, it's definitely a bit softer and more approachable um, using the fig and cinnamon than the Angostura bitters. Obviously you've got that nice kind of juicy fruitiness um, from the fig. So if you're not 100% sold on the idea, maybe trying one of these slightly less astringent bitters um, to start off with is a good idea. And then again, the orgia just really kind of brings it all together. It gives that lovely kind of toasty nuttiness um, a very, very yummy sort of winter warmer sour of a drink. I just think it's a cracker. Um, so well done, boys. So there you have it. Weird on paper, but it works. So the next time you feel like something bittersweet, then give it a little try. I mean, with all of those botanicals in there, it's basically medicinal. Um, and thank you again uh, to Lieber and Co for sending over these syrups. As I said, the Orja definitely is a pretty integral part of this drink, um, so it works really well using a good quality one. And if you are on the States, they're pretty readily available online. Um, just jump on the link below. So now you know.